Today we're going to be talking about using pre-formulated flavors to make your syrup, your cocktail, your soda, or your food item because using pre-formulated flavors is actually a pretty good way to get started. The reason is, first of all, they're cheap. This 15 ml bottle can make upwards of 50 liters of soda and it only costs $3.25. Plus there's a hundred plus years of research behind these. So a lot of these common flavors like peach and watermelon, they all have you know, research labs that have developed them. So they're actually pretty good to begin with. Because I get a lot of questions about how to make those flavors and I will be doing those in the future, uh, the near future. But uh, the reality is, is that they're a little bit more complex because you have to use all these different compounds. You're gonna need, you know, a dozen or two of them to actually get a flavor compound. And you're gonna have to tweak it. And that is a lot of work. So using a starting point that is well made and then modifying with these is probably a better way to go if you're just new to the flavor development word world. Let's talk about these because they're gonna give you a head start. They're good, cheap, and easy. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink and working with flavors is you know, relatively easy. Some people get lost because of a little bit of math, but I'm gonna solve that for you. So when you work with these flavors, it's really hard to find information on the internet on how much to use, but I've dug it all up. I know it all for you. So I'm just going to tell you. The starting point is roughly 500 parts per million. Now what's 500 parts per million? That's 500 milligrams per liter. This is a liter. If you put 500 milligrams or half a gram into this, you're gonna get 500 parts per million. Now you can go around making one liter tasting solutions, uh, but that's a lot of work. You're going to have, you know, dozens of these bottles. So, you know, if you're gonna do one for every flavor, and I've got about 400 of these flavor compounds. So I'd have 400 of these bottles around, which I do not want to have. I want to reduce it to a 100 ml bottle. So what's the math on that? So instead of putting 500 parts per million or half a mil into this, because that would be too much, what you really want to do is add, you know, 0.05 mils. So how much is that? And that is one to two drops. So using one of these cheap, you know, plastic droppers, you can get pretty close to that. And that's a starting point. You can use more, you can use less. It all depends on the flavor. But one of the things is you just kind of got to experiment and find what works for you. But here's a general rule. Using too much flavor compound tastes bad. Uh, less is often more. We need to have a taster solution. So you're called a basic taster in the industry. So what is a basic taster? It's just a 10% sugar solution. So 100 grams of sugar up to a liter of water. So when I say up to, in chemistry I often use this little arrow that says, just bring it to a liter of water. You just want the final volume of everything to be a liter. So you don't necessarily need an accurate number for the water, just the sugar, and then you can bring it up. Pretty simple, don't overthink this. This is quick and dirty. You know, and in the engineering world, there's the quick and dirty method. And once you get an understanding of what you're doing, then you can fine tune everything. But everything today is quick and dirty. Do not worry about being accurate with that. If you're doing 90 grams or 110 grams, it's no big deal. Just be consistent. So if we want to use our basic taster and 100 mils, and we're going to start off with 500 parts per million, that means we need 50 milligrams of flavor compound in a 100 ml bottle. So what's 50 milligrams? So if I were to take my strawberry syrup here, or my flavoring, and I took one of these pipettes, and I'm gonna weigh out 10 drops, and then divide that by 10 just to get the average for a drop. So it's 10 drops. We're basically getting 26 milligrams per drop. Now, as I mentioned, we need 50 milligrams in a 100 mil sample or 100 mil sample. So that's like two drops. So that's what we're going to do. I find glass droppers to be a little more accurate or the drop size tends to be a little consistent. So I'm just gonna show you that.
So 10 drops of our strawberry flavor comes out to 250 milligrams or 0.25 grams. Divide that by 10 because I did 10 drops and we're getting 25 milligrams per drop. That means it's actually easy to measure out 50 milligrams, two drops. So we'll use this, but let me show you how to put it all together. You're gonna to take a 100 ml beaker. You're going to take your basic taster 10% solution and you're going to quick and dirty roughly bring it up to the 100 ml mark, okay? And you're gonna put it on a stir plate. And you can shake this if you want, so you can put it in the bottle and shake it up. I like to use magnetic stir, put that in there, turn that on. We're going to take our glass pipette here, or eyedropper. We're going to, that's it. That's the starting point. And by starting point, I mean, you can taste this. And if you need more strawberry flavor, then you add another drop. If you need more, you add another drop. It's not rocket science. It's really just kind of upping the flavor until you get the flavor you want. Now here's something you should do, add too much flavor and then taste it. What you're going to find is that at a certain level, so if you were to add like half a milliliter to this and then taste it, uh, it's going to taste off. And it's not gonna burn or hurt or cause any problems, it's just not gonna taste good. And you need to know that if you're doing flavor development because that's when you know you've gone too far. And in this industry, less is more in the sense that oftentimes it's using less, which is going to bring out certain flavors. You know, I know a lot of people love this idea of, you know, use more, 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 more. That doesn't necessarily work for what we're doing here. 50 milligrams in 100 mils is a great starting point. And if you want to do a liter of it, then you just do 10 times as much, you know, 100, by 10 is 1,000 milliliters, which is one liter. 50 milligrams times 10 is 500 milligrams. Uh, it is a good idea to just kind of test your droppers on a scale. Uh, I will be doing a video on balances and scales in the near future. Uh, this whole video kind of opened my eyes to how to teach you to do that. Uh, it does help. But anyway, all you need to know is one drop of these flavors kind of comes around 25 milligrams. Now, that doesn't mean it's 25 milligrams of flavor because there's uh, about 75% propylene glycol in these. So, you know, you're using like 12 and a half milligrams of flavor compound in that. But when you go up to the parts per million, that works out to be about 125 parts per million of flavor compounds, which is in, you know, in the range that you want to work with. Now you could taste this. It's going to taste flat. It's going to taste like a flavor. It's going to be missing something. So I make a buffer solution. If you watch my zero calorie sweetener video, you'll remember I made a buffer uh, partially for preservation purposes of the zero calorie sweetener. And you can use that. So if you've made this, you can use this. I did this one, it's based on some feedback, people were using tap water and they weren't getting the exact pH. So I did made this one slightly stronger. And this one's just 15 grams of citric acid and 12 grams of sodium citrate in 100 mils of water. So basically you dissolve 15 grams of citric acid and 12 grams of sodium citrate into 100 mils of water, put it in a bottle, and then you use one mil of this for every 100 mils. And sometimes these droppers don't quite get there. This one seems to only go to 75, so you can just take a little bit more. And you always wanna do the acid at the end. It does cause problems with the, the flavor compounds uh, dissolving into the water uh, because most of these compounds don't necessarily like to dissolve in the water, but they're used at low enough concentrations that you can get most of it in. Anyway, use your acid at the end, but this is a really quick, easy way to do it. Now you let that stir, and then if you want to taste it, you just take a dropper. And yeah, it tastes like strawberry. Like it really does taste like strawberry. 
And again, you know, you could taste it with doing this, but then you can taste it tomorrow as well. But two drops seems to work really well for 100 mils on these flavors. So you can make a syrup out of it. That requires using a little more because you're going to be diluting that, but we'll talk about that a different day. But if you're learning and you wanna taste all these different flavor compounds, two drops per 100 mils with a little bit of acid, the buffer solution I just mentioned, and for anybody who doesn't know what a buffer is, it just manages the pH around 3.5 as opposed to just using pure citric acid, which will drop the pH too low and kind of, you know, a strawberry can easily taste like raspberry if you have a really low pH because raspberries tend to be a little bit more acidic. So this just dials in the pH kind of around 3.5. It could be a little higher, a little lower, depending on your tap water. And if you're using distilled water, uh, you're gonna get a more stable pH. So this is all stuff in formulations, but I don't want to overwhelm you with all sorts of details. So here's what you need to know. Make a 10% solution of sugar, 100 grams in one liter of water. Take your flavor compound, two drops into 100 mils of your taster, stir it. After a couple minutes, you take one milliliter of your buffer solution and you add it to this and you let it stir for another minute and then you can taste it and if you want you can put it in a bottle put it in the fridge let it sit overnight it'll probably last a couple weeks again having a lower ph below 4.5 is really helpful in preservation and then what you can do is taste this over a couple days and determine what you like if you taste it right now and you don't find it very strong you can just add another drop you know, you probably go up to four or five drops, you know, you're kind of pushing it beyond that point. But I do recommend pushing it beyond that point. Go up to, you know, 10 drops and you're going to find it starts to have this off flavor. And that's the point where you need to know that's the max that you can use. But in reality, less is more. So I know it looks a little complicated. It is actually fairly simple. Uh, just follow the 10% two drops, one mil, and you're good to go with all of these flavors. So I hope that helps. You know, if you have any questions, go over to Patreon. I, I get a lot of questions about this, so it does help if you support the channel. Uh, so just head over to the Patreon channel. I do respond, there is a Discord group now, so uh, other people can help you as well. So just let's keep the conversation going, and I will show you more on this in the near future, especially using these. Uh, it's a little bit more intense because some of these are especially like things like hedione. You know, you want to, they're used at one part per million and that's a lot harder to get, but I can show you a way to do it fairly easy. So I'll be a uh, video in the near future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.